Let's talk batteries, particularly how somehow it's still one of those subjects that is still riddled with misinformation. Like, I bet you still know people that believe in battery memory and are too afraid to charge their phones intermittently, or, or even better, people that just close apps just as soon as they're done with them and are just always frantically closing everything that's open. You know, those people. But, you know, I digress. Today, today let's focus on charging. The myths, the truths, and um, everything that you need to know to get the best charging experience possible possible, particularly when you just need it the most. When you're leaving the house and you have just a minimal amount of charge, how can you get that charge up to speed as fast as possible on as many devices as possible with, you know, important caveats, but without delving too much into the weeds of things. With the advent of this little port, USB-C was a promise. USB-C was supposed to make everything simpler, one cable, one port, to rule them all, and the dream of USB-C was born with this promise. Uh, the idea was you pretty much get a charger, you get a cable, and it plugs in, and no matter if you have an Android phone, even an iPhone at this point, and you just plug it in, and it works. Kinda works. Like, if, if you just want to get a charge and that's the entire point of it, yes, it technically works and it charges no matter the type of cable, no matter the type of charger, you will get some charge. But if you want to get the optimal charge or charge as fast as possible, there are plenty of small little details that you should really take under consideration. Very basically, when it comes to the hardware side of charging over USB-C, the single most important variable to take under consideration is the charging protocol. This is pretty much the language in which the charger and the phone communicate by, and they have to agree that they both support this language in order to achieve the max rated charging speeds. Some of the most common names are USB PD or USB power delivery. You also have Samsung Super Fast Charging, which is a variation of power delivery, but Samsung puts their name on it. You also have Qualcomm with their standards and OnePlus with Super VOOC and Huawei with Super Hyper Charge or, you know, so it's a lot of standards. It definitely can get quite confusing. So here's my sort of general advice that applies to pretty much 99% of people that just don't want to spend their entire afternoons searching charging protocols and how to maximize their experience. USB power delivery is the most common amongst phones, laptops, and many other devices. Google uses it, Apple uses it, and it is compatible with all devices, albeit it isn't the fastest protocol for certain devices that also support their proprietary standards. For those devices that support the proprietary standards like OnePlus, Asus with their ROG Phone 8 Pro or Huawei, you want to use the charger that came in the box with the device if you want to achieve the absolute maximum power delivery that they can accept. And then there's the cables. They all look very similar, so it's quite easy to get confused, but there can be some quite significant differences between them. Like for example, when it comes to charging cables, USB-C pretty much divides itself into 60 watt cables, 100 watt cables, and 240 watt cables. This is pretty much the marketing language that you'll see on Amazon if you just search for cables, but they split themselves into pretty much the power capabilities that they can transfer, and that's pretty much dictated by a chip in the connector itself. If the cable doesn't have a chip in the connector, it will be limited to around 60 watts and 3 amps of power. If they have this chip, they can go up to 5 amps. Those are the 100 watt cables and there's still cables that go up to 240 watts that support a special 48 volt mode at 5 amps but those these days are mostly not really necessary for most devices. But unfortunately, it isn't as simple as matching a device maximum power that it can charge with, with a cable that charges at about the same level. Like, for example, if you get a Samsung device like an S23, S22, S24, doesn't really matter, a recent device, they will charge up to 45 watts, but you will need a 100 watt power cable to be able to achieve the maximum charging speed that it can, you know, achieve. That seems counterintuitive because a 60 watt cable should be more than enough to charge at 45 watts. But you kind of need the 5 amps that are only available on the 100 watt cables uh, to reach this uh, sort of charging speed, so it can get quite confusing. But you know, here's, here's, here's a general piece of advice uh, if you're trying to simplify your life when it comes to the cables. Just buy the 100 watt cables. Like for most devices, if you're charging a laptop, if you're charging uh, a phone, if you're charging uh, pretty much anything that supports fast charging over USB-C, 
a 100 watt cable will be enough for everything. Like there's still space for a cable to not be good enough, even if you get a 100 watt cable, like you might be able to not just be a good cable, that can happen. But as a general rule, Avoid the 60 watt cables because sooner or later that cable is not going to be good enough for a device that you upgrade down the line and a, a USB cable can last you uh, a really long time. And uh, since we're on it, just avoid the 240 watt cables that are usually quite a bit more expensive and shorter lengths, um, so uh, there really isn't much of a point. So unless you really know that you need it, like you have uh, a power bank that can charge up to 140 watts or a laptop that can you know push all that juice just a 100 watt cable should be more than good enough for most people and finally let's talk about the logistics of actually getting the fastest charging possible like picture this uh you're late you have to leave your home and you need to get as much charge as humanly possible what's what's the game plan what's the first thing that you're going to do now i'm not going to sit here and advise you to follow some of the most common pieces of advice that you hear around like put your in power saver mode or uh, turn on airplane mode or turn off your device because in the real world like if you're in a rush to get away or to leave your house you should be uh, reachable like people should be able to call you uh, if they need to because you're probably going somewhere or beating someone so airplane mode or turning off your device sounds like a bad idea and power saver you know all these tips can marginally help you because really the thing with charging is you reduce the power that goes out and you increase the power that goes in the biggest the difference the fastest the device is going to charge but realistically the most important thing is how quickly can you plug in your device into a proper charger and how cool can you keep that device during charge like avoid wireless chargers because they'll always be slower so follow the tips in the beginning of this video to get a good charger that provides the power the phone needs with a decent cable and just plug it in as soon as possible and unplug it as the last thing you do once you're leaving your house and when it comes to heat you know just avoid putting it in direct sunlight or on top of something that's you know fluffy like your bed covers or something that usually isolates the heat inside and doesn't really help the phone to retain the max charging speed and phones really really throttle charging if they are too hot and can't really you know remain at a safe temperature during charging and that's pretty much it that's pretty much everything that you can do to actually get that charge as quickly as possible look you, the truth is USB-C is confusing there's a bunch of different variables and I only talked about the charging side of things there's a whole other world when it comes to the data transfer speeds but uh, it is difficult to make a video that both gives you the actual truth and the actual information, whilst at the same time gives you enough tools to make that information actionable. Because, you know, information for information's sake isn't really interesting for most people. Like, I enjoyed being hunched over on a power meter and just measuring how much power a device is pulling from the wall, because I like to seek the actual truth about a particular subject. But most people just don't care, and they shouldn't really. Standards should be made to make people's lives easier and uh, in reality USB-C is a mess and it really should be improved when it comes to how these standards are enforced, how cables are marked clearly and how sort of charging standards all converge towards a more common, more user-friendly and more compatible standard that, you know, just simplifies people's lives because, you know, that's, that's the entire point of tech. Make life easier. Or I don't know, at least that's how I feel about tech. Yeah, oh, um, that's pretty much it. I think that's everything about USB. I hope you enjoyed the video and um, I'll see you very soon with more USB stuff and uh, hopefully other topics that aren't as confusing. Okay, um, yeah, bye.